Well, good morning, and welcome to this Jammies with Jesus on Monday, December 14th. Um, the rain is nicely coming down. I planted about six peonies on Saturday and Sunday, and was wondering about watering them in, and then I saw the forecast that called for rain, so I got to get out of that job. Um, when I get up in the morning, I usually, while I'm still in bed, uh, flip through Facebook and Twitter just to kind of catch up on what's happened overnight. Um, some refer to that sometimes as doom scrolling, which I don't get too caught up in that. I truly just try to hit the highlights. But it, it allows me to catch up on folks. I'm not huge on social media, but I do like to stay connected. And so I'm thankful to read from Ellen Gerardo that Christopher Gerardo has been on the cannula, I guess the, the nose versus a face mask for oxygen treatment, has responded quite well to the medications they've been giving him and the treatments he's been receiving. And so she's hopeful that um, he may be released from the hospital possibly as early as tomorrow once his five-day course of uh, treatment was uh, taken care of. So, so things are looking much, much better. So continue to pray for Ellen and Christopher. On a personal note, my uh, cousin uh, had, um, had bypass surgery this past Friday and she too is recovering um, well. Uh, her, her daughter posted that it's a painful surgery and it's followed up by a painful recovery. But um, Kim is quite the story. She slipped on ice maybe two years ago and had a severe, I'll call it traumatic brain injury and not simply concussion, although concussion probably covers it too. That forced her to retire early. Um, it was so devastating that um, she could not do the most basic of tasks like laundry that her injury to her brain was so uh, devastating. She has been working diligently with rehab um, this last year plus um, and has again shown good signs of recovery um, but then um, and, and just has a tremendous tremendous spirit but I think of her because she's a, um, a newscaster in Portland Maine for 30 years and so would interview presidents and world leaders and just travel the circuits and everything and then um, have that devastating injury totally change one's life and still to have such a great outlook um, was something. Um, also got to see <laughs> Kathy and Donnie Harris, probably Kathy posted it, but Abby uh, Harris, uh, I think Kathy used the, said, um, people have asked whether she's as joyful as her, as her brother. And so there's about 20 seconds of just pure baby giggling and belly laughing as I, I think it was probably Donnie tickling, but just you see the interaction in her eyes with the people she knows and loves already and the care. And so just the joy, that just exuberance of a child's, an infant's laughter. So that all ties in together with this past Sunday, yesterday was Gaudete, I, I probably butchered the name, Sunday in Advent. It's uh, Rejoice Sunday. And the history behind it is that Advent used to be much more of a penitential season versus an anticipatory waiting season. And so the third Sunday in Advent um, kind of was like a pressure release valve on the penitents and uh, try, leading up to the birth of Christ. And so it was Rejoice Sunday. Some Lutheran congregations have a pink candle the third week in Advent. Other traditions in the Lutheran church do not. Um, all depends on where you come from. So, so having said all that, I know I normally start with scripture, but I start with a whole lot of reflections first. But this is Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul long, indeed it faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. 
As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. So this sense of joy, this sense of, um, I, 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 I love, again, some of the poetic imagery there. Um, rather be a, a what, what did it say? Rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. Um, Last night, I also um, I watched the movie Loving. I don't know if you've seen it or have seen the documentary, but it's about Richard and Mildred Loving, who um, that is their last name, and they, they fell in love. And he's white, she's black, and that was against the law, the miscegenation laws of the time. And so it, it told their story going all the way to the Supreme Court, where eventually the miscegenation laws were struck down. And I was thinking, uh, Renee's half Mexican, and I don't know whether people would have applied that law to us back when, um, but there's a simplicity in this story, such that when the attorney was getting ready to present to the Supreme Court, was trying to convince the couple to come with them because it's only one in 400 cases is selected to go be heard by the Supreme Court. I don't know what the statistic is now. I'm sure it's no less than that. Um, so it's considered an honor to have your case heard, but he did not want to go. Um, there was a, a part in the movie where it was, he was wondering what the, the arguments against them were, and part of it were vicious attacks on their children being biracial. And my, I'm reading into this, but my sense is um, he wanted no part of that. So they asked, um, is, is there anything you want us to tell the judges? And he simply stated, tell them I love my wife. Why we as human beings have to make it more complicated than that um, is beyond me. I love my wife. Um, so that that gets into again the sense of joy that the the peace and happiness that comes when people um, those that seek to be partnered and have uh, um, spouses or beloved companions um, the obstacles sometimes we can throw up as a society based out of fear instead of out of love um, uh, one last thing, I know I'm bouncing around a little bit, but one last thing, I really appreciate everybody's participation in the congregation meeting yesterday. I think based on the call for how many votes were in favor of, uh, of, the, of the annual ministry plan for this year, 74 votes were recorded. Um, we had maybe two, four, six, Maybe seven of us were present at the at, at, at physically in the building, um, worship leaders from the morning. Um, so that's 67 participating online. And I was thinking in my four years here, outside of understanding the the time when I w was not present for the for the vote for me, most of our congregation meetings seem to have 40 to 50 people. So to have 74 participating and virtually everybody remote where we were no we knew unequivocally people were being safe um, it just takes some pressure off so i really appreciate everybody working and a huge 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 kudos to cheryl ingram smith on just being you can tell why she must be a fantastic professor because her demeanor her willingness to respond to questions even when some of them seem very similar in nature and just as new people came on maybe needing pointers 
Uh, so thanks to everybody for making that a, um, a safe and productive um, congregation meeting yesterday. Now let us pray. Holy God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for a little bit of a, a warming weather to be able to sit out and actually enjoy it. Um, we give you thanks, Lord, that, that vaccinations have begun to ship across our country and even around the world and pray that that um, process towards vaccination and us doing the safe practices of physically distancing, wearing a mask, washing our hands, avoiding crowds, being outdoors more than indoors, that all these efforts can help slow and eventually vanquish the virus. Be with those in need of healing this day, comfort those who are grieving this day, and help us as your people to choose joy, to choose love, um, to make your world a better place for all. And these things we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Pastor Josh will be with you in the morning. Uh, again, we have our Wednesday, our final midweek Advent service this Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. where the theme of joy will be continued forward. And so I hope you have a blessed day. Bye-bye.